Hi guys, Anthony Ergo here. So, this is a, a video I'd like to make a regular feature actually. It's uh, obviously going to have a lot of fun with Ruin on this channel, but I'd like to actually take a critical look at things from a writer's perspective. So, it's something I spend a lot of my time doing. I've been a writer for 12 years. Uh, before that, I studied English literature. I also studied film as well. So, it, it'd be good for me just to really use that knowledge and apply it to the things we love, such as Star Wars, but other things as well. And in today's video, I really want to compare the themes of two trailers. Obviously, the uh, the new Star Wars trailer, uh, The Rise of the Skywalker, but also a trailer that released a week ago, which was for The Joker, uh, the new DC film. And if you haven't seen that, I really recommend you to go and check that out after this video. So, one criticism which is often leveled at Ray, the character of Ray, and we've had two films with Ray now, and we've we've seen a little bit more in this trailer. I know it's only a teaser trailer, but it's often leveled that he's hard to uh, empathize with because she's good at everything. The whole label Mary Sue. Now, there's there's a, a crucial element required for character empathy and it's vulnerability I don't think we get to see enough vulnerability with Ray, and I think that's why it's hard to relate to that character so if we think right back to Force Awakens and really that's the only time we get to see any vulnerability is it's in the flashback scene where she's a, a small child and she's been pulled away from her parents so we get a very brief moment, just a couple of seconds, and then after that we never really get to see it. Okay, she's alone in the desert, but she's coping fine. She has a routine uh, as a scavenger. So there's an opportunity there, maybe a missed opportunity to show a little bit more vulnerability. And then after that, it's really just, you know, she seems to excel in everything she does. And this is one of the big problems, you know, she's she's never defeated she seems to acquire skills very easily maybe there's going to be an explanation for all this but it still doesn't help the fact that it's hard to empathize with that character because she's she's so good at everything now uh, if we look at the Joker in the Joker trailer now this is a huge task to take on the character of the Joker is you know, we've had some amazing portrayals of the Joker. Uh, none other than Mark Hamill, by the way, he did the animated version. Obviously, there's the uh, Jack Nicholson version uh, in the sort of late 80s, 90s, which is really iconic. And then, of course, the Heath Ledger portrayal. So, some amazing portrayals of the Joker, even if you go right back to the 60s, you know, the, the original TV series. So, huge... Huge task here uh, for DC to really give us a, another version of this character when we've already had so many great incarnations. But the crucial thing I took from that trailer was the vulnerability of the character. Now it looks like they are setting up the Joker in his in his own movie, maybe then to uh, bring him forwards to, to do battle with Batman. But they've really thought about the backstory and if you watch that just two minute teaser trailer, you know, we have him in therapy. We we see glimpses of his relationship with his mother. We see his daily struggles as a you know a street entertainer, and how he's beaten up. I think he's beaten up twice in that trailer. Yes, he's weird. Yes, he's creepy. But we're shown that it's because he's a tortured soul. So even though we know he's going to become a an antagonist. We can relate to this character. We see him as a vulnerable person and we, we we learn a lot about him just in those two minutes and what he's going to become and the reasons for that. And then we, we see his final form, you know, as as the, the clown, the true guise of the Joker. I think it's an amazing trailer. It's I've watched it quite a few times now and I cannot wait for that film. It's uh, I think it's due to drop in October. If we then look at what we got in the, the Rise of the Skywalker trailer, so we had Rey, opens with Rey, Rey's our main character, she's in the desert, she's breathing and she's maybe under stress and 
is that enough to, to make us empathise with her? Well, it's not, because whenever we've seen a remotely challenge, she seems to come through it no problem. And this is always an issue at Ray. You know, when she was captured in The Force Awakens, she discovered the, 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 the Force mind control. Uh, when she was then uh, captured by Snoke, again, you know, she got out of that situation and she fought off all the, the guards pretty easily. And it's really hard to relate to a character when we don't see them vulnerable and uh, we don't see them in any peril. It's hard to feel that there's ever any danger. And if you think of that scene in The Rise of the Skywalker where Kylo's TIE fighter is barreling towards her, honestly, do we really think she's in any danger? Uh, and then we have this Matrix-style backflip. And it, it's just so hard to relate to a character when there's no real adversity... Uh, we don't see a vulnerable side to them. And I, I've i thought about it a lot, and I think that's a missing element of the character of Rey. Uh, just my opinion. And even though we, we see later in that trailer, there's a moment where she she sheds a tear with while she's hugging Leia, but scenes like that, they have to be earned. You have to put in the character development to get to that point. Otherwise, it's, it's just a physical portrayal. Of, of a weakness but we need to understand why and where it comes from and I don't think we ever get that with Ray throughout any of the movies I hope we do in this final film I'm I'm fully aware that we're, I'm just basing this on a, a two minute teaser but we've already had two films with Ray and we, we've not seen it at all we've not seen any vulnerability except for a, a few seconds worth in The Force Awakens whereas you take a two minute teaser trailer for the Joker and we see a lot of vulnerability to set up a character because it's needed because we can't we can't go on this journey with the Joker unless we really understand where he's come from and you know what makes him what he is and they look as though they've done a great job of it so that's my thoughts on both trailers both drop within a week of each other from what I can see a very positive reception for the Joker I know it's Star Wars, there's always going to be a lot of buzz, but there is definitely some negative reactions towards the uh, the Rise of the Skywalker trailer. Um, majority is, is positive, but there, there are some uh, people who have problems with it. So I thought I'd just make that observation. I'd be really interested to know what you think. What other characters do you relate to because you see the vulnerability, whether they are... A, you know, a protagonist, a good character, or a villain, an antagonist. We should see different sides to the character, and we should see vulnerability so we can connect to them. So that's my thought for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I say, I plan on making a series of these. And uh, the next one, I'm going to look at the concept of plot holes. It's always been mentioned in relation specifically to The Last Jedi for thinking of Star Wars. So uh, there's been a lot of denial from one so side of the fandom, whereas the other side of the fandom uh, strongly believes there are plot holes. So I'm going to try and settle that debate. I'm going to explain exactly what a plot hole is, and we'll have a look if we can identify any in The Last Jedi. So that's my thoughts for today. Good speaking to you all, and uh, until next time, may the Force be with you.